Adam's strengths has always been that no matter what, he doesn't really give in. He is never the one to kind of admit that someone's better than him. The mindset for him is that he's better than everyone else and he wants to go and prove it. I grew up with my family a bit outside of Gothenburg. My cousin and my uncle, they were both uh, professional football players. We have like that in our family, in our blood to be competitive to to win. Och det har alltid varit en väldigt aktiv kille när han var liten. Han eh, alltid inom sport eh, intresserade honom och det var ju både fotboll och innebandy. Och sen så fastnade han ju mest för ishockey som han höll på med tills han blev 18 år. I love sports, I love competing and like the team environment. I don't think I would be able to play like a solo game. Like I, I love the team aspect of, of sports. I started playing Counter-Strike back in 2005. A friend of mine bought Half-Life 2 and included in that was Counter-Strike Source. We finished playing Half-Life 2 and eventually we said, oh, we have another game here called Counter-Strike. Uh, we both sat down and uh, played it and we were like, wow, this is a great game. My parents hated seeing me in front of my PC. Me and my brother, we had one and a half hour per day in front of our PCs. The rest of the time we had to do homework, meeting friends or doing other sports or you know activities. I samband med att han satt ner och spelade vid datorn och var mer och mer orolig så blev både jag och Adams pappa oroliga att han satt för mycket vid datorn. Och det var inte bara det att han satt vid datorn utan Det här spelet som vi då inte förstod vad det var, var ett väldigt intensivt spel med ganska höga ljud och, och, och så vidare. Och gick man in och tittade så såg man ju bara som förälder hur de sköt varandra. Så att det var ju ingenting som vi tyckte någonting om, utan vi, var, vi blev ganska oroliga. Eh, vad ska detta leda hen att sitta och spela ett sånt döda spel? It was, it was hard to convince them to, to let me play. I could be sitting and playing in a, in a game and my parents would just knock on my door saying, hey, you have to get off the PC now. I was like, wait, I have like two rounds left. I have to play. But I think the, the main thing for me, why I was allowed to play was basically one of the old owners in my team, which I played with, had to call my dad to tell him, like, you need to let Adam play more. Like, we need to let him play the matches uh, which we have scheduled here. Och förklarade då också då att bara så att ni förstår så just nu så är Adam rankad nummer 16 i Europa i det här spelet och det är ett helt lag som spelar så att det är inte bara han utan hela laget är beroende av att Adam är med. Det var ett litet uppvaknande. After I finished school um, I was still playing semi-professionally and uh, eventually I got an offer from Fifflaren to join his team. I'll be honest, he, he used to be a little shithead. Um, he, he talked a lot of smack. Uh, he was super cocky for uh, what he believed to be, you know, he thought he was the best player in the world, even back then. There's obviously a lot more to Adam uh, than what first meets the eye. I think it went really fast from, okay, he's a cocky guy, but it's for, it was for a reason. Uh, in terms of uh, the, having the winner's mentality, that's really Adam in a nutshell. Back in Source, when I played with Fiflaren, we were one of the best teams in Sweden, if not the best team in Sweden. When CSGO was released in 2012, we had the beta keys from Valve. We started playing and we were like, yeah, this is pretty close to CS Source. Um, and we heard some rumors that 1.6 players were also going to move over to the new game. And I knew that they contacted Fiflaren uh, to create a team together with him. Uh, there were four people. It was Exist, Fiflaren, Get Right and Forest. And then Freiburg was the last piece. And Freiburg was really someone that I was at least uh, hoping that they would pick up, knowing his mentality and knowing how much effort and time that he puts in into making sure that he's one of the best players in the world. I literally spent every woken hour of the day to play CS, to try to convince them that I was the one they should choose to, to be the fifth player in the team. I was really hoping that, you know, the guys would see that. Um, and, you know, the more they played with him, they kind of saw that too. And I think uh, eventually, right, we kind of just locked ourselves in on, on Freiburg. And that's really how the team was formed uh, with the five. We had a pretty good, like, start to the team, um, obviously. When we started playing and we were winning tournament to tournament, it was it was fun. 
NIP had probably the most impressive win streak in the history of any eSport I'm aware of. In their first 87 offline maps of Counter-Strike, they won all of them. <laughs> it's, it feels weird to talk about, but like I was never actually, I never got tired of winning. Like it was super satisfying being there, lifting a trophy, winning, just feeling like you're on top of the world. We never really knew what we were bad at when we kept on winning everything. It was very hard to improve uh, when there was nothing to improve upon, so to speak. I think it was like the second or third tournament that we actually started realizing we haven't lost yet. I think it became a bit pressure on us, but I remember losing the first map against Virtus Pro. I just remember Forrest just applauding us, saying, okay guys, like this streak was really, really, really awesome. The first team in history to beat NIP on land, they must be feeling happy if only we had a shot of the Kiev Arena at the moment. Having a good mentality and having a good chemistry in the team made us being having the like NIP magics, as people call it. He is very much an anti-fragger. He's very much a space creator. Yeah, he's very much the happy, energetic uh, kind of player that brings everyone up. But first and foremost, he's never the one to kind of give in. Uh, he's always the one to, you know, like, you know what? Like, yeah, we're, we, you know, I keep on dying here. Bring me in again. Just like, let me add him. He hits the shot. JW down it. What is this? Triple kill for Freiburg. Oh. Freiburg finds his third and fourth. Beautiful shot with Whoa. the pitch. With Tech 9, and that's got to be it. An ace from Freiburg. All with the oh Tech 9. God. He's going to be walking up. Spots Pro next here in the corner. Takes him down. Turns around for the 180. Dark 15 bullets left. Freiburg crunches it. Are you kidding? It's going to be a double. He does it again and again and again. I was very aggressive. I wanted to be the guy who got an all the frags. And how did I get all the frags? Yeah, by running in first. In most cases, this is not something you can actually teach. Uh, because it takes a lot on a player to go in and die 15 rounds in a row and not really give a damn. For Adam, it's natural. He just does it, right? He's not gonna, even if he dies 9 rounds in a row, I ask him to go in for a 10th round, he will still do it. It wasn't uh, like bad to be an entry fragger when you know that you have Forest, Get Right, Exist, and Fifth Larn behind you. If you would fail, at least you would get info to your team and, you know, to walk in first and die, take a bullet for Forest isn't too bad. You win as a team, you lose as a team. Uh, I think Adam has really, you know, really lived and breathed that for, for most of his CS career. I became famous on playing uh, Banana on Inferno. I mean, it was just one of those positions which I was really comfortable at, and uh, I managed to do a couple of highlights. Make it for Freiburg! Excellent defense there on Banana! That was fun, like, then seeing the, the memes or, like, the nicknames coming up, like the King of Banana. It was more fun for me, I didn't really think about it, but it also boosted my confidence a lot playing there. NIP created King of Banana ice cream. It was basically like a banana split, so like an ice cream with like banana and chocolate flavor, and they named it King of Banana after me. And uh, I think that was, that was pretty cool to have like something named after me. I think one like highlight or scene from me playing um, that defines me is probably my ace against Fnatic in the 2014 Cologne final. Back, all finds, all find the shot on. This primer does return, picks off Phonax. He's still here though, and he's going for more. Two big pranks. The third man is here. Our friend Freiburg has to back up. But Freiburg somehow opens it up single-handedly. Rotation, oh. Freiburg. All he has to do is stay alive, and it's going to be great. Oh, he picks up a quad kill. He can do even better than staying alive. He it was a obviously pretty important uh, round since we ended up winning the final and the major. I think winning that event meant a lot, and I think that uh, it, I think for everyone it was super nice to kind of get that major win with the core five. Och då ser vi hur de står där vid den svenska nationalsången och, och så där, och det var ett otroligt starkt minne. Då var man stolt <laughs> och är stolt fortfarande. Also winning in front of our home crowd in Malmö 2016. That was one of my uh, favorite moments in my career. Coming out of uh, our booth and uh, walking out on the stage and see like the thousands of Swedish fans who screamed out their joy was uh, that was something I'll remember for the rest of my life. When I was replaced in NIP, for me it wasn't too bad, like obviously it was sad because I wouldn't be playing with my friends anymore, but we had had so poor results that year that we all felt like we, need, we needed to make a change. I think for me, Adam is a guy that is uh, very hard to replace on a team. He brings a lot, and I think that once you lose a guy like that on a team, you lose a lot of your identity. I never really thought about quitting, like I had it 
like should I keep on playing like who could I play with and everything like you know you have a lot of thoughts when when you get the decision but I still felt like I wanted to keep on playing basically the idea just came back to my mind like in the beginning I wanted to create like a young Swedish team which I would be captain of which you know I could basically teach how to play CS then eventually when when I found out that exist get right is available I'm available fifth learn is available as a coach and we started you know messaging Forrest saying hey what's up <laughs> do you want to play I always wanted to give this team another shot with the old lineup and uh, I'm so glad that we did it even though we've been playing with each other for many years before it was like a new team we have to really get used to each other in game again it was rough like we we had to go from the bottom and work our way to the top and uh, in the beginning at least it went fairly well eventually like we had so bad results that you felt like there was something in the making we tried everything like we tried changing positions we tried changing basically everything we could have changed but we still couldn't make it work what i saw for the first seven months it was a lot of damage that we were doing to these guys right uh, instead of you know it was supposed to be a good time back we're supposed to be winning some games you know the guys are back it turned into instead i think a lot of pressure uh to kind of um, get the results and when the results didn't come I think there was a lot of just anger uh, that was getting built up I want to still prove that we can still I can still play at the top level and with the two new players in our team I'm fairly sure that we we will be a completely new team like we, we tried bringing back the the old players uh, it didn't work but now it's going to be a new beginning for Dig CSGO He's learned a lot for the past few years. I think that the development now, when he did end up leaving NIP, you know, he joined Optic, he joined Heroic. I think he got a lot of experience and I think he got a different mindset into, oh, how does the actual game progress? How does it work? Uh, and I think he spent a lot of time in actually working on that, in becoming a strategical mind. I have a way which I see the game, which I love, <laughs> obviously. And I feel like I, I, can, I can read the game uh, fairly well. And I think I, the more I played with our team now during uh, 2020, I felt like I want to get my input out a bit more and more and more. And eventually it came to the point where Robin asked me if I wanted to, to try in-game leading and uh, I said yes. From five years ago to now, I think the development of Freiburg has been absolutely tremendous. I'd say that there, there has been a remarkable kind of turnaround for Adam in the sense of the, where he has chosen to kind of put his efforts at. I want to be a good in-game lead, I want to feel like my team, I want to let my team play the way I want them to play and they, the way that they want to play the game as well because when people are playing in comfortable positions, which you know, when teams are, are feeling confident, everyone is doing their like A position, the A game, that's when they're at their best and uh, I just want to make sure that my team is like feeling super comfortable because um, I think then that's when we're going to get results. Being one of the older players in the scene, I think I have a couple of like obligations, especially to the younger players, to to teach them how to play CS. Like for example, if if we pick up a young player and he's never been to a big LAN event, I think it's my obligation as an older guy in the team to to try to comfort him, try to tell him how it's gonna be, prepare him as much as I can, and also like teach him basically the way of how it was for me when I was young, like talking from my experiences and trying to help the, the younger players in the scene. You know, I kind of see myself in Adam in some sense as his mentor, you know, in, back in 2010 when he moved to Ireland, both in game and outside of the game. Uh, and I see Adam doing exactly the same thing. You know, I think Adam is super smart. He is one of the nicest guys you've, you've ever met. He's super loyal. Uh, he means well. Uh, he, he doesn't tilt easily. He's good at explaining, you know, his thought process and what he wants. And I think that once, you know, the more he picks up this in game leader role and the more experience he gets in that way, I think that I, I can definitely see Adam playing this game for uh, for a very long time still and still keep on developing uh, new Swedish talent. I keep playing because I'm super competitive. I, I love competing in the game. Um, obviously playing in front of a crowd, it only adds fuel to the fire for me. It's the best feeling in the world and lifting a trophy, like standing on stage and feeling that you actually you are the best team in, in this tournament, you won this tournament. That's uh, Everyone should uh, try that feeling. It's great. I promise you. For me, it's super important that you have faith in your team. 
I'm here to compete. I want to go to events. I want to place good. I want to be a top 10 team. I want to, you know, go to tournaments and have the chance and the feeling that we can win this tournament because otherwise it's not worth it.